So I guess it's time to, to wrap all of this up. And, it, and it's difficult to wrap up a uh, discussion on that financial crisis because that financial crisis didn't really wrap up in a very clean or succinct or easy way. Even now, I still talk to people have disagreements as to when it ended. I mean, it, it obviously did not end when TARP passed, right? There was still some incredible uncertainty and anxiety that continued. As far as if you want to look at when the recession ended, you could argue it was still going for almost two more years. Certainly well over a year of negative GDP growth, of a contraction in our economy. But then if you look at the hangover of that negative GDP, the unemployment rate was still up around 10% in 2010. And we didn't end up getting back to around 5% all the way till 2014 or so. Um, you, you just you just had a very deep and severe economic contraction, why they call it the Great Recession, because it was the deepest and widest that we had had since the, the Great Depression. But as far as um, being a little bit more specific in the way we talk about it than just simply the recessionary impact into the broad economy of what happened, the financial crisis is a bit more specific as it is referring to financial markets, exactly where things were with credit, um, the ability for our financial system to operate, for banks to access liquidity, and, and, and for people to feel like the kind of unraveling was done. So it's for that reason that I think you sort of probably could best define the end of it at the point at which the stock market bottomed. And, and that is not because I'm picking the stock market as sort of my favorite barometer, my chosen one, you know, being an equity investor and things like that. It more has to do uh, with it being as good as any of a point in time at which financial markets did resume some degree of normalcy. But as I said, you still had three rounds of quantitative easing that the Federal Reserve did after that. You stayed on a zero interest rate policy for literally seven more years. And even as I'm talking, the balance sheet buildup of buying assets that the Federal Reserve did is in effect right now to this day, with only a tiny bit having come off of that. And even that all within the last um, year, basically. So this was a long, deep, penetrating crisis. And, and yet, uh, on March 9th of 2009, um, we did indeed uh, hit a generational bottom in the stock market. Um, they passed uh, relief from FASB 157, an obscure but utterly incoherent mark-to-market -market accounting regulation that was forcing banks to mark assets at deep, deeply distressed levels, not indicative of their performance or reality, but indicative of illiquidity. And then it had a spiraling effect. Um, and that relief combined with all of the aggressive measures, uh, both on a fiscal and, and, and especially monetary basis, the, a good portion of which I would disagree with, but nevertheless would have had some impact one way or the other, some of which were, I think, were, I imagine were very appropriate from a policy standpoint, but that, that's not really our, our uh, agenda here right now. Uh, I did a pretty lengthy podcast to uh, kind of look at what this all meant for investors and what it means for investors today. What are the takeaways for real life people 10 years later from the financial crisis? And, and at that advice and insights uh, podcast, I, I think you will find a, uh, a key takeaway, and that is that investor behavior really dictated how investors ended up doing. Investors um, exercising good behavior in the years before the financial crisis were largely not caught up in the leverage explosion, in the irrational exuberance of, of uh, buying assets, believing in this permanent movement higher that where prices got disconnected from reality. But to the extent that we're just simply talking about a starting point of 2008 
and going forward, and those that live through the carnage of a 50% drop in equities, of a 50% drop in housing, um, time and time again, what you see is that the decisions investors made made all the difference. Uh, having an asset allocation going into the financial crisis that was indicative of one's own risk tolerance, of one's own liquidity need, of one's own timeline, of one's financial reality in terms of cash flow, taxes, that made a huge difference. If one had side-pocketed adequate liquidity, if one was uh, receiving dividends from a still-growing dividend portfolio, even when stock prices were, of course, dropping. Um, the fact of the matter is that panicking out of stocks at a bottom made it very difficult for people to come back in, uh, and it started the probably worst emotion that an investor can ever feel in terms of the consequences it's going to create through time, and that is the emotion of regret. And it starts with regretting you didn't sell earlier, and then it starts with regretting that you sold when you did, and then it starts with regretting that you didn't buy back in when you should have, and, and you continue to second-guess yourself, and you get stuck on a hamster wheel, and it's just brutal. And I've seen it a lot of times, too many to count. So I encourage you to listen to that podcast, and I encourage you to look back at that financial crisis, regardless of where you were in your investing life at that time and what you believed about it ideologically, what you believe about it today. I could talk on all that stuff for many hours. And, and I think a lot of the cultural and social impact of what that meant to our society uh, those are things that we should still be talking about. I wrote a book largely about that subject. It means so much to me. But when we break it down to the actual um, impact of the financial crisis uh, economically and in terms of capital markets and the things that we learned from it, um, I don't think people should forget it. I think that we should remember that incident for what it was, a failure of policy, a failure of uh, cultural restraint, uh, a failure of um, regulation, a failure of, of Wall Street prudence, um, but also a recurrence of human nature. And this is the part I'll leave you with. What happened in 2008 had happened many times in history in the, at a high level. Excess, greed, euphoria, this time it's different, leverage, debt. Uh, 2008 was not the first time. And it will not be the last. Future debt-laden, greed-driven, irrationally exuberant periods won't look exactly like 2008. But those characteristics I describe and the behaviors that flow from them are part of human nature. Human nature is not going to change. And I think that's the key lesson I'd leave with. What were the dark sides of human nature that created the first crisis and that we have to be aware of in our lives as investors? The belief that there's easy money, the belief that if our neighbor's doing it, we can do it, the belief that one can just have free money if they borrow enough and close their eyes and watch some kind of bubble take hold. Uh, we need to repudiate that thinking no matter what the asset is doesn't have to be Florida condos next time, and it doesn't have to be dot-com stocks. Uh, but, you know, maybe next time there's a talk about some cryptocurrency thing. You don't have any idea what it is. You remember the financial crisis. Maybe next time we think people are saying some technology play that makes no money, that it can never, ever, ever go down, um, we can remember the financial crisis. But more important than anything else, systemically, we have to remember that periods of contraction, periods of mistake, they happen, they will happen again, and yet that prudent investor who worked through the hard times, who maintained a discipline, uh, you're sitting on a stock market that's more than tripled since the bottom of that market. And uh, what, a, what a ride it's been. It, uh, a memory of 10 years ago I don't ever want to relive, and yet I'm quite certain I'll relive in a different manner in the future, more bad periods, more need for us to hold clients' hands. That's what we get paid to do. And I hope this series has been interesting. I hope a little trip down memory lane has been impactful for you. Um, I remember it all like it was yesterday, and, and I look forward to the next 10 years. Crisis, 
periods of uh, good times, bad times. It's all part of the deal. I hope we've learned and the beat goes on. Thanks for listening.